mountains and I look at the valley and I look at the sea oh my God you are when I look when I look at the mountain and I look at
in charge. He is in control. your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's enter into a time of praise as we celebrate the Lord. Amen. Let's receive Deacon Atu. Praising the Lord always. Praising the Lord always. Praising the Lord with all your heart. Praising the Lord with all your heart always. Praising the Lord. Praise the Lord always. Praise the Lord with all your heart. Praise the Lord with all your heart always. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord always. Praise the Lord always. He's the way with all your heart. Praise the Lord with all your heart always. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord always. Praise in the Lord, always praise in the Lord with all your heart. Praise in the Lord, praise in the Lord. Hey, we give you praise in the Lord. Hey, Hallelujah. Oh Lord, praise in the Lord. Hey, we praise you, Jehovah. Lord is good, yes, Lord is good. We praise you, Lord. Yes, Lord is good, yes, Lord is good. 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 Yes, Lord is
Yes, Lord is good. Yes, Lord is good. You are so good. You've been so good. We praise, praise in our Lord. Yes. He's worthy. You alone are worthy. Yeah, yeah.
International Goshen Sanctuary and the presiding apostle would like to welcome all of you to this live service. Hallelujah. And we are proceeding with the service. I would like to invite Reverend Abiku Aidan to lead us in a short prayer. Hallelujah. Jesus is still on his throne. Hallelujah. In spite of whatever is happening, Jesus is on his throne and he is controlling situations. Hallelujah. This morning, I want you listening to me to join us in prayer. Just about two minutes prayer. Hallelujah. 
Now, we are going to pray and thank God for preserving the lives of people in this nation. Hallelujah. In spite of all the things that are happening, the Lord has preserved us as a nation. We want to thank him for what he's doing for this nation. Shall we pray? Shakata. Thank you, Jesus. Ikasi andeza. Mantakaza. Likatarabaza. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness and your mercies that are always with this nation. Ikasu andeza. Lanta zahandaria. Kabandara bashanda. Lima zakantaria. Mamandara bashanda. We thank you for leadership, O Lord. We thank you, O Father, even for everything, everything that you are doing. We thank you for the fact that even the heart of leadership is, is towards you. We thank you even for the fact that the leadership of this nation is calling upon your name because they know that you alone can come into this situation and help us as a nation. Thank you, Jesus. Shakata, Zakaka, Mantarabaza. Lima zaba bandara basha, lika si inde zaba kanta zahari abaka zaha. Thank you, Jesus. We are praying. The Bible says in Psalm ninety-one, verse ten, it says, "There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling." We are praying that as this plague is spreading across the world, Bible says it shall not come near the dwelling of the people of the Lord. We are praying that this plague will never come near our dwelling according to the word of the Lord. That we will be preserved in everything in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your word which assures us that there shall be no evil befall us, that no evil will befall your people. Father, let no evil befall us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. The word says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. As we call your name this morning, save us, Lord, save your people. Let not this plague come near our dwelling in the name of Jesus. As we have come to hide in you, you, you alone are our hiding place. We have run into you and we know and we trust by the authority of your word that we will be safe. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration in the name of Jesus. Finally, we are praying for everyone who is locked onto this live worship program around the world. Anyone who is locked onto us into this live program this morning that the, the Lord will stretch forth his hands and reach unto them with his protection, with his preservation, with his blessing, with a word of hope in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. Father, stretch forth your hands. Touch every individual who is, who is within the, the, the reach of our voice this morning. Touch their lives with, 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 with healing. Touch them with hope. Touch them with your preservation. In the name of Jesus, bless their lives, Lord. Touch them with your blessing that they will know that it pays to serve the living God. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, somebody out there, put your hands together unto Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. This morning, I want to encourage you wherever you are that God is still in the reign of affairs. Amen. God is still in charge. He is bigger than COVID-19. Oh, I didn't hear an amen to that. I said God is bigger than COVID-19. Hallelujah. To proceed with our program, we have one of our choirs in the house to minister a song unto us. Please help me welcome the some part of ever increasing faith choir let's put our hands together as we receive the administration wherever you are please prepare yourself as they bless you with a song before the word of god comes hallelujah hallelujah the bible says in second timothy chapter one verse seven says that god has not given us a spirit of fear but he has given us a spirit of love and of power and of a sound mind amen, amen. so we trust in him in Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. 
said I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God said I'm no longer a slave to fear no no I am a child of God say you unravel me you unravel me with a melody oh yes the Lord you surround me with a song of deliverance of deliverance from my enemy From my mother's womb, from my mother's womb, you have chosen me, you have chosen me, and you have called me by my you name. You called me by my name. See, I've been born again. I've been born again into your family, into your family, and your blood runs through my veins. We sing it one more time. God, you have chosen us, you have chosen me, and you have called us by you our name. Me by my name. And I've been born again, been born again into, your into your family, and your blood, your blood, your blood you runs through run my veins. Hey, because my of this, say I'm no longer, I'm no longer. Oh, my God. 
God in my heart. Yes. Because of this, no plague shall come nigh in your dwelling. Yes. Confess and believe it that God hasn't given you the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Hey. See, I'm no longer a slave to fear. Yeah. Hey, I am a child of God. Someone declare it one more time. Say, I'm no longer a slave to fear. Why? Because I am a child of God. Hallelujah. You are a child of God. So fear not. Fear not. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am a child of God. I am no longer a slave to fear. But I am a child of God. Say to yourself, I am a child of God. Say, I am not a slave to sin. Or a slave to fear. But I am a child of God. Hallelujah. It's a powerful song ministration. No plague shall come near our dwelling. Amen. Amen. In all things, we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Today, we are coming to you live from Love Community Chapel on Facebook. And uh, that is a virtual test service. Virtual. And I trust that God will use this service to be a blessing to you wherever you are. Amen. Church continues unabated. Now, our churches are in homes. By the grace of God, we have home cells. So, we look, to, we, look, we look so good in our home cells. So all the home cells, uh, you can wave to me. Just wave to me. Wave to me. Hallelujah. All the home cells and everybody in here who just wave to me. God bless you so much. Hallelujah. Enjoy the home cells. Enjoy live broadcast in the home cells. Shall we pray shortly? Father, we thank you and bless you. Give you glory for this morning service. Thank you that, Lord, you are God. You are everywhere. Where two or three gather in your name. You are right there in the midst of them. And we know you are here right in the midst of us and those in their homes and those watching in, in various places. Let your spirit move across the world, every home, every place where people can watch us live and let your word create the impact it needs in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, you may take your seats and let's do some word study, um, some preaching, some expose on end time prophecies. I will share with you about end time prophecies shortly. But then, Last Wednesday, I stood here and spoke to you about how to overcome your fears. Amen. Because fear is a spirit. I said last Wednesday that fear is a spirit. Second Timothy 1 verse 7 says that, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of power, and of love, and of sound mind. So fear is a demon. So when you are afraid, you really are in trouble. Because Satan will take advantage of your fear. To harass you more, destroy you. And I quoted the scripture in Job 3, verse 25. Job 3, 25, 26 says that, For the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me. <laughs> and what I dreaded has happened to me. So what you fear will happen. Never fear you will die. Otherwise you will die. Don't fear you will be sick. Amen. Whatever you fear and dread will happen. Verse 26, I am not at ease nor am I quiet. You see, when you are afraid, you never be peaceful. Never ever be peaceful because fear will create panic, conditions, depression, and so on and so forth in your life. Amen. And it says that I have no rest. You become restless for trouble comes. When you are afraid, you become restless. You know, you do everything by panic. Now, there's panic buying everywhere. People think that Ghana will go through the same process as other countries have gone through. I mean, lockdown, complete lockdown. Amen. But we trust in God that we won't, won't get that far. And if you, if you get that far, God shall be with us. Amen. So, don't be afraid. Tell somebody, don't be afraid. Elbow somebody and say, don't ever be afraid. No shaking of hands. Amen. So, say, I'm not afraid. Now, God's word is, is very prophetic. God's word, everything that's happening today is in God's word. 
is so clear in God's word, but we don't seem to understand and even believe in God's word. So I'll take my time to explain to you the events happening right now in the world from biblical perspectives. Okay, we need to understand that these things are real. They are in the Bible. God has not left us alone. He has spoken about them in this word. So let's dig into the word and see what God has said about these viruses that are killing. Now, um, God's word is called a more sure word of prophecy. It's a more sure word. Second Peter 1, verse 19 to 21. It's a more sure word of prophecy. Amen. Now, Jesus himself says something. He said, the heavens and the earth shall pass away, but my words shall never pass away. Jesus Christ gave prophecies. Several of them about what's happening right now, but we don't seem to really get the grasp on the word. It's right in the Bible. We don't read, we don't understand, we don't even dig them. So we get, we are afraid. We get, we get several things happening, being cheated, being deceived and them. Now, in Matthew 24, verse 33, Matthew 24, 33, and it says that, So likewise, ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near. It is near. Even at the doors. Verily I say unto you that this generation shall pass away. This generation shall not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Hallelujah. But of that day and hour, knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. But the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So Jesus has actually explained to us that it's near. The days are so close. And whatever he has spoken to us shall come to pass. The heaven shall pass away, but its word shall not. It means every prophetic word Jesus spoke shall see fulfillment. Hallelujah. Now one day, the disciples came to Jesus Christ, as it were, to make inquiries about the end time. I'm sure we all want to know about the end time, don't we? Yeah. We want to know what's happening in the next 30 years, in the next 50 years, in the next 100 years. We are curious. We want to know. I want to know. So Jesus actually um, took time to explain to them about the end time events. It's called eschatology in, in biblical um, terms. Amen. So Matthew 24, verse 3. I'll read from that place and I will explain to you what is happening. Please appreciate the word. Take time and let's dig into it so we can understand the events. Because what you are informed about will help you to inform your behavior, to, to, to straighten your behavior. So get informed. Amen. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, his disciples came unto him privately, the private discussion, privately, privately, in this, privately, privately, okay, saying, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming, one, and of the end of the world? So two things were mentioned. The sign of his coming and the end of the world. Okay, so they inquired, when will you come? What are the signs of your coming? And then the, the world will bow its end. What are the signs of the end? So the disciples inquired. I'm sure we must be curious about what should happen after here, now we are seeing this deadly virus killing people here. The people are afraid. People are just afraid. I mean, with several laws, you know, which are very good, distancing yourself socially, you know, cleaning your hands hygienically, you know, keeping, I mean, keeping some amount of hygiene in your life. It's so important because of this single small thing called coronavirus. Coronavirus. Killing people. Thousands of people are dying. And every now and then we recall people, you know, in Europe, the number is going. I pray for them. I pray for Italy, France. I pray for other countries that the Lord shall intervene. But these things are real. Death is real. Please don't take it for granted. Nothing happens by chance. Nothing happens by chance. Everything has been calculated and planned from God's end and the devil's end. I'm telling you, whatever God has for us, Satan has something opposite. So take note. There's nothing that happens by chance. It's been planned from hell. And God shall permit it. But God will use some of these things to change our lives. Yeah. So, please listen to me carefully. 
The disciples were curious to know about what would happen at the end of the way, the signs of it. Now, Jesus Christ was so good. I mean, he had to teach them things that would happen, you know. So, um, Jesus took time to, to, to teach them. Amen. Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, say, I am Christ, and shall deceive men. This is, is real. We've had false, false Christ already, and they are still coming. Hallelujah. And shall hear wars and rumors of wars. I mean, that's what wars, plenty wars. First world war, second world war, you know, um, and so and so forth. Many of them, they are still signs. See that you be not troubled. Don't be troubled. So this is to happen, but don't be troubled. That's a, that's a word. These things will happen, but for a believer, don't be troubled. That is what Jesus Christ said. Wars will happen. I mean, things like this will happen. They will happen, and they are happening. But Jesus went to us, don't be troubled. Say, I'm not troubled. Come on, say, I'm not troubled. Lay, I lay your fears. I mean, get off your fears. Let the fears leave your chest right now. In Jesus' name. He said, don't be troubled. So Jesus Christ has given us, I mean, I, I don't know. He has given us the cure. The antidote to handling the situations. One, don't be afraid. Don't be troubled. The antidote, don't be troubled. Oh, I love this. I love Jesus. <laughs> For all these things must come to pass. Must come. It's a must. So, they have been calculated. I mean, please understand. It is not by chance. There's nothing that happens by chance in the world. For a virus to be kingdom, it's not by chance. God has it in his calendar. And Satan has also planned that for us. Hallelujah. Amen. For all this must happen to must come to pass. But the end is not yet. The end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation. It's been happening. Kuwait, um, Iraq against Kuwait, uh, Saudi Arabia, I mean, I mean Yemen. You know, we have uh, um, um, this guy is happening right now in many countries. Fighting is going on in countries. Hallelujah. Amen. And kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. I mean, so famines, hunger. <laughs> uh, they are there. In fact, right now, people are getting there. Because it looks like many shops have been closed in America. Shopping malls have been closed for, this, for, for, the, for, for social distancing. People are just rushing to buy food, panic buying. You know, <laughs> and so and so forth. Yesterday in Ghana, somebody said he couldn't get tomatoes to buy. Here in Ghana, tomatoes. Tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. He couldn't get tomatoes to buy. So we are getting there. These things are real. Don't take it for it's a sign that something will be happening soon. Don't take it for granted. Hallelujah. There shall be famines and pestilences. What are pestilences? Let's define that. They are plagues. Pla plagues. Plagues are like viruses, sicknesses that come to kill people. P pestilences. Pestilences. So these things are. Read. Jesus Christ spoke about them. There will be pestilences. There will be plagues. Plagues. One of them is coronavirus. Corona demon. It's a demon. Hallelujah. And earthquakes. As for earthquakes, we've been experiencing them in diverse places. And all, the, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Listen. <laughs> if these are, if these are the beginnings, how would the end be? If these are the beginnings of sorrows, Coronavirus killing people. How the end be? It means that death will rise. It will escalate. If all we are experiencing today are the beginnings of the sorrows, it means there are, there are more sorrows coming. There are sorrows with high, <laughs> high rates of, you know, you, please never ever take this for granted. When we say Jesus is Lord, he's Lord. He's Lord. Whatever you are speaking about will come to pass. He said he will die and rise again. Did he die? Did he rise? Ah, so whatever he has spoken, he will come to pass. Nobody can be like Jesus Christ. He's my master. He's my king. He's my Lord, my friend, my everything, my savior, my deliverer, my healer, my doctor. Oh, come on, eh? We can't compare. Jesus said he would, these things are the beginning of sorrows. The beginning. So if this, the beginning people are dying like this, the world is afraid, then what will happen in the middle? That will happen in the end. It's just begun. Like a woman about to give birth. The pangs have just started. Hallelujah. So, these things are there to come. Now, let me give you a few points and then I come down. Why are these things being allowed by God to happen? Number one. 
why are these things being allowed by God to happen? Number one, it is a trial of it's a trial of our love for God. It is what a trial of our love for God. These things are happening to test our love. Amen. Now, the greatest thing God wants from us is no money. God, we can't give God money. We can't give God food. What God wants from you and I is, is love. That is all. If somebody loves you, you love him back. Love him in return. So the greatest requirement from God, okay, I mean, to us, is what? Our love for him. That's why in the book of Matthew 22, verse 37, 38, Matthew 22, 37, 38, it says that, he says said to him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, 38. This is the first and great commandment. So the first and great is that we should love God. So God wants your love for him. But your love shall be tested. Your love for God shall be tested. And this is a time when God is testing the love of believers. I'm telling you that. Take it. He's testing our love for him. Amen. Hallelujah. If you love God and they say there's no church, will you still pray? Will you still read the Bible? There's no church. So holiday. Oh, holiday, no prayer. Holiday, no giving. No tithing. Uh, no, no worship. You know, no evangelism. Nothing. Holiday! <laughs> Do you love God? God will test your... This is a type of test for every believer. If you love God, and you love God indeed, sincerely, you will be tested. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, God will use some things to test, test, test our love. One, iniquity. A, B. I mean, one B, iniquity. Matthew 24, verse 12. Matthew 24, 12 and 13. It says that, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall grow cold, shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So in the end time, people's love for God shall grow cold. Because of iniquity, sin. So be careful that there's a sin in your life. It shows that your love is growing cold. We are going through a very trying moment this is in the whole world. And you love God. Sin will try your love for God. Because sin shall increase. Everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, people will sin and they still sin legally. They will sin with a signature. They will sin with a stamp. I mean, they will sin. Serious sin. And their love for God shall grow cold. Amen. They will steal and endorse their stealing. They will fornicate and endorse the fornication. It's my body. It's my, it's my life. Leave me alone. Yeah, people say that. Christians are bastarding. Many are bastarding. It's my life. Leave me alone. It's my life. They, they will, a man will take a woman who is not a wife and say, oh, does it matter? You can have a, a husband. You can have a wife. You have a garden. I mean, people, sins shall increase. And because of sin, Christians' love shall grow cold. It's a test of your love for God. Then God shall, use, God shall use troubles to test your love. Troubles like what's happening right now. Um, Romans 8.35 Romans 8.35-39 It says that Romans 8.35 Romans 8.35-39 Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Take note. Who shall what? separate us from the love of Christ? Romans 8.35-39 who shall tribulation or distress? Have you seen tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Amen. It is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. Amen. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, now things present, what's happening now, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
If you're a genuine Christian, nothing shall separate you from God's love. Not coming to church at a meeting place won't separate you from God's love. Ban on church will not what? Separate you from God's love. Amen. He said, four weeks ban, no problem. You still have time with God in your home. Wake up in the morning, have your worship, morning devotion, Bible study, quiet time. Yeah, you keep doing these things. We say that now, we, we, now there's no church. We don't give anymore, right? And we say, give on, give on, give, give online. Remember, you remember it if you love God. It doesn't stop you from your spiritual obligations. Ban on church doesn't stop you from being a Christian. Does it? No. Ban on church doesn't stop you from being a believer. You are a believer and you are required to obey and obey God and do every discipline as a believer. So you will not come here, but keep on serving God in your house, in your home. Yeah. Hallelujah. There's no ban on being a Christian. So there's a ban on just gathering. If you are a genuine Christian, you keep on serving God even when there's a ban on church gathering. Nothing shall separate you. Not even death. Even when you are dying, say, say I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Nothing shall separate you. Not nakedness. Not famine. There's no money. There's no, there's no money. And so what? There's no food. And so what? I still love you when there's no food. Hallelujah. Nothing. So this thing should, will, will, will test your love for God. Hallelujah. Amen. There's something in the book of 2 Corinthians 8 verse 24. 2 Corinthians 8 24 says that therefore show to them and before the churches the proof of your love. The proof of your love. Love is proven. And of our boasting of, on your behalf. So love must be proved. You love God, prove it. This is the season to prove your love. You don't come to church on Sunday and Wednesday, but in your house, you're having church today. You wake up in the morning, there's a God above you who is looking at you. What do you do to the, that God? You worship him. You pray to him. If you love God, but there's no church, you want to continue worshiping God in your own way. Number two, these things will try your faith. These events in the world that God has permitted will try your faith. They will try your faith. Hallelujah. First Peter 1 verse 1, 6 to 7. First Peter. First Peter 1, 6 to 7. And it says that in this you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little, now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Amen. The seven. That the, the genuineness, the genuineness of your faith, verse seven, that the trial of your faith, the, 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 the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So, God will test your faith and is doing so right now. Whether you love, whether you believe in him. Now, some believers are sliding because of no church. No church. I mean, it's like holiday for them. Oh, oh, they said, sorry. sorry. So now you have your own life. Nobody controls you. No pastor stays here and there. Nobody controls your life anymore. Your faith is being tried. Whether it is a genuine faith. Like gold. Gold is tried. Amen. It's when gold, when gold is tried, it goes through fire. So God will take you through fire. At this time, it's a fire time. Yeah. The coronavirus is coming to test our, our faith for God. Hallelujah. But then, uh, we have a good news in the Bible. James 1 verse 2 says that when we have been tried, we should rejoice. In this time, rejoice. That's the antidote. James chapter 1 verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall to diverse trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces what? Patience. Amen. Let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So after this season of four weeks of no church, you come back stronger. You come back stronger. Lacking nothing. It produces faith in you. It produces a genuine faith in you. Your faith must be tested, tested to see whether your faith is, is real or not. Oh, some people show off, show, let's show up in church. Oh, let's go to church. Social God. They just come for friends. But whether you are a genuine Christian or not, now this is the time to show. Your, your faith will be tested. Hallelujah. Why will it be tested? 
so that the best will come out of you. The best will come out of you. God wants the best out of you. your best faith. The best will come out of you. Hallelujah. Then number three, God will test. It's a trial of your followership. If you are following God, God will test your followership. Is that that's the last one? Is a trial of your followership. If you are following Jesus, God will try you. God will try you. He will try you. Amen. Mark 10, verse 21. The Jesus looking at him, loved him, and said to him, One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come and take up the cross and follow me. Take up the cross. This is a time for Christians to take up the cross. The cross is, 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 is it stands for suffering, going through hardship. And suffering must come back to the church. Let's, let the cross come back to the church. If you're a genuine follower of Christ, you cut off from the world. Worldly influences. He said, one thing you lack, go and sell all. Go and sell all the things you have. It simply means that, you know, try and take your passion from the world into Christ. The world is moving you to do things. The influence of the world. Take the passion for the world and think about Christ. Think about heavenly things. Amen. And take up your cross and follow me. This is the season when God wants to know who are the sheep. And who are the goats? Are you a goat or are you a sheep? Sheep follow. Goats don't easily. They are stubborn. God wants the sheep. Not the goats. Now when you read scriptures, in the last day, when we all stand before God, the Bible says he will separate the sheep from the goat. This is a season God will test your, your followership. Are you following Jesus? Are you a sheep or a goat? He said, my sheep knows my voice. And they follow me. So if you are following Jesus Christ, even in the midst of no church, you can still follow him right in your house and still love the Lord and follow him. This season, God is testing whether you are a sheep or you are a goat. Are you a goat? Ask somebody, are you a goat? Ask your friend, your, your, your sister and brother. Ask your husband. You are in the house watching me. Are you a goat? Ask yourself, Am I a goat or am I a sheep? Because when the day comes, he will separate the sheep from the goat. As I end the message this morning, I want to say something in Matthew 25 verse 14. And it says that, he will say to those on the left hand, depart from me, you cast into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Who are those on the left? The, the goats are on the left and the sheep will be on the right. But to the goat, he said, depart from me, you cast into eternal fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. In the church, there are sheep and there are goats. There are people in the church, we all come to church, all right, but in the church, there are sheep and goats. I don't know whether you are a sheep or you are a goat. Now that we say that now, we, we can't have church. Everybody log on Facebook. We shall see whether you log on Facebook. The sheep will follow where the shepherd goes. We said, now let's gather in the sheepfold, in the homes. We see those who are real sheep, who gather in the homes. The sheep will gather in the homes, but the goats will not. Please, if you are here and hearing my voice, that's why my voice this morning, check your life, because these things are real. Become a real sheep. And I'll make another call, and we pray right now. If you are watching me live on Facebook, let me tell you, we are in the end time. The, the signs are showing everywhere. And this virus has come, corona, killing. There are more viruses coming. More will come after here. Watch and see. More will come after here. More serious ones will come. They are come to test your, your faith and your love and your followership of God. Church members who are in homes watching me live, those who are watching in their homes on their own, I challenge you. Are you born again? Salvation is real. You can be saved. If you are told that Jesus is coming tomorrow. How would you behave? Yeah, today people are gathering everywhere. I mean, they are, they, 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 they are not gathering. They are in their homes doing their own thing. Preparing to die or preparing to whatever. If you are told that the world is coming to an end tomorrow, 
how would your behavior be? Today, I want to challenge somebody. If you are not born again, I'll pray for you. If you are born, if you know you are not a Christian, but you are a goat, you can change to be a sheep right now. And God shall have mercy on upon us. In Jesus' precious name. Let's pray shortly. Close your eyes and pray with me. Wherever we are. Thank you. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he shares on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to, to trust, trust and, and obey. obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Close your eyes, wherever you are right now. If you want to get born again, this season of coronavirus killing people, you don't know when it will happen to you. It will come close to you. Somebody didn't believe it. It happened to them and they are gone. It will never come near, near you. But if you are not born again, you can be a victim. You may not know when. People have died, left their houses, left their mansions, left their cars. You don't know where they are right now. I tell you, please don't take your life for granted. People have died in Europe, in China, other places. And they're still counting. Please, they are living this world. Where would they be? They are going. There's a world after here. If you are here this morning, you can hear my voice. Close your eyes. If you want Jesus in your heart, lift your right hand to God. I pray for you right now. Jesus will come into your heart and save you. His words are real. They are prophetic. Now say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for me. On the third day, you rose again. I accept you as my Lord and my personal Savior. I thank you, Father, in Jesus precious name. Let me pray for you. Father, all those who have watched me live on this program, all those who have today given their life to you as Lord and Savior, Lord, touch their lives. Lord, preserve their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray that, Lord, this life shall be kept kept intact to the day you have appointed for them when they come to you in your heavenlies. We thank you, Father, in Jesus precious name. Amen. Amen. Now we we'll pray a prayer for um, Ghana. We we'll pray a prayer for the world. Short two minutes. I pray that the demon shall find its way out of the world. It must go. It's from the sea. It's from the sea. It's from the devil. May God help us intervene. Now lift up and say, say, Lord, we come against the coronavirus, harassing the world, destroying the world, killing people robbing us of life social life such life good life we bind it right now and cast it in jesus name come on pray pray shande kutia paloni lusanta lendoro boshtaka ilian damasi and say and say can say libyan tun sampan tale kantuni luban dale zazaka tu parianda Eh sama kase kwa takwa ma kwa takwa te libio takia kwa sama katuka lento sama tumbini we come against you devil corona devil we command you to come out from the world go back to the sea go go Jesus day ma santa seke ila baba baba boy boy in Jesus day we are praying the last prayer may God intervene may God intervene say Lord have mercy say Lord have mercy on our world. Say, Lord, Lord have, mercy have mercy on our world. Come on, pray. Laba Shaka, Arian Silushi, Siantam Pandan de Kauka, Yauka, Paukauka, Let them believe me, Tonta Kanye, the Loko Takota, the Prode, 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 with Jesus' precious name. Thank you so much. Amen. Hallelujah. Wave to me. Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I give you glory. I give you, glory. I give you Hannah. I give you, I give you praise. In Jesus' precious name. 
Amen. Now, wherever you are in the home, give, some, give God some clap offering. I mean, clap. If you are in church, God is right there. I mean, God is right there. Are you, a, are you a goat or you are a sheep? If you are a sheep, you can clap your hands wherever you are in your home. Yes, yes. Sheep, sheep obey my voice. My sheep obey my voice. My sheep obey my voice. Yeah, so if you can clap up for him, he will hear your voice right now. Come on, clap for him. No shyness, no shyness in Jesus' precious name. If you are a good sheep, you will heed the voice of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, listen carefully before we end very soon, the next 10 minutes, but listen carefully. We are still having church. There's no holiday on giving. No, there's no ban on giving. Only a ban on gathering. <laughs> there's no ban on prayer. There's no ban on praying tongues. Karobeso in Tontia, Tauta, Parekesh, Equa and Dagua, Chapo, Mo, Ma, Meleme, Tokimu, Ragosa, Gaji, Biande, Tosi. There's no ban on tongue speaking, so you can pray in tongues. You know what I'm saying? This some Christians are backsliding because they think there's a ban on everything. So I'll pay my tithe. I'll bring my tithe. So if you have your tithe, take your tithe in your home, take it. If you cannot. Um, pay your tight there right now. You can mumble your tight. Yeah, you can mumble your tight. The number is 059. Now, is that a mumble that the tight one or all or, or, or giving? For all giving, right? I thought we could separate it. Okay, but 059 145 295 Five zero again zero five nine one four five two nine five zero for our church members who don't have their tight our offices are open you know our offices every Tuesday from ten o'clock come around and pay your tithes and you give you be giving a receipt to show that you pay your tithe at the church office hallelujah every day from from Monday to Friday come to the office uh, sorry from Tuesday to Friday to the office and pay your tithe there. Church is continuing because we have to we have to pay missionaries who are outside the country and who are within some parts of Ghana. We have to pay them. Some outside the country, we have to pay some missionaries, you know, because God's work must continue. Amen. There's no ban on mission, mission activity. Huh? Is there a ban? There's no ban on uh, mission activity or missionaries. So we should still pay, we we'll still pay them. Amen. So take your tithe and, and, and then we'll pray. And then also we also give them called kingdom vision partners. Kingdom vision partners. Every month, some of them decide to pay some amount of money. Apart from their tithe, they pay something to support God's work. It is called kingdom vision partners to support missions and, and living Jesus campaign. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then if you have your breakfast sacrifice, we'll pay that one to that one to come. Hallelujah. Your breakfast sacrifice will come later. But please lift your offering up. Take your seat. Take your tithe. And take your seat. Amen. And let's give to the Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Take your seat up and let's give to the Lord. Amen. There's no ban on giving. If you stop giving, you, you, stop, you, you, you stop losing. Your harvest will be destroyed. So keep giving. If you are somewhere outside Ghana, you can hear my voice. Take your money. Take your dollars. Take your pounds. Take your euro. Nothing is free. We are here by by cost amen everything costs if you are in europe you are in uh, america you are in anywhere you are take your seat and the momo is over there you can do it to come directly in, in in ghana cities lift it up say lord i sow my seat in your kingdom i believe i'm reaping good measure press down shaking together and running over in jesus name hallelujah so let's let's sing to the Lord right now, okay? I know He rescued my soul. His love has covered my sins. I believe. I believe. Lift your voice and sing. My and my pain is healed in the same. I believe. Oh, I believe I'll raise the banner, sing I'll raise the banner Cause my Lord Hey, my Redeemer is My Redeemer My Redeemer is My Redeemer Now, 
Uh, now listen to what I say. God sent his son. They call him Jesus. He came to die. Heal and forgive. He lives and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is that to prove that my Savior lives. One more time. God said, God said, they call him Jesus. He came to die. Heal and forgive. He lives and dies to buy my pardon. I'm an empty grave. Has that to prove that my Savior lives? Because He lives, because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Face tomorrow. Oh, because He lives, all fear is gone. All fear is gone. And now I know. And now I know. Yes, I know He holds. Hallelujah. We are in church. Are we in church? Yeah. Okay. Now, our breakfast sacrifice. I know you are there. You can hear me. For our church members who are watching in uh, the various small group meetings in the homes, please take your breakfast sacrifice. If you don't have an envelope, I'll give you the mobile number, the same number number. And the number is what? Give it, put it back, put it back, put it back, put it back. Um, reference is tight. You can reference. If it's a tithe, make a reference to tithe. If it's an offering, if it's Kingdom Vision Partner, just, just do it. 059-145-2950. Our members are watching in the various home cells. For those who are not members of the church, I won't bother you, okay? But for our members who are watching as across the nations, okay, in the various home cells, we do this in our churches. So uh, it's, not, it's not something that we are trying to be too some way. Hallelujah. So, the breakfast sacrifice is the sacrifice we give to build the temple. We are building God's temple. Hallelujah. Amen. We must finish it. So, take your breakfast sacrifice and let's give to God. If you don't have an envelope, well, you can just move it. Or, you keep it and then this week, you come to the office and if possible, you pay all of that you have to pay to the Lord in Jesus' precious name. Let's go. Because he lives tomorrow because he lives, our fear is gone. Fear is gone. And, now I know. and now I know, yes I know, he holds the future. And life is worth a living just, just because, he because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do, Jesus? Name above every other name. What can you change? What can you change? What can you change? What can you change, Jesus? You are. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Nothing you cannot change. Nothing you cannot change. Nothing is coronavirus. Hey. Nothing you cannot turn. turn around. You are able. Hey. Great and mighty God. I put my trust in you, God. What can you do? What can you do, Jesus? Name above every other name. Name above every other name. What can you change? What can you say? What can you change? You are able, Jesus. You are able. Trust in you. Trust in you. You are able. You are able. You are able. What was that You are able. Break it down. Jesus. You are able. Jesus is able. You are able. He's able to kill every coronavirus. He's able. You are able. without your knowledge. Even in this situation, Lord, we say thank you. Even in this situation, Lord, we give unto you, Lord. And we know according to your word that you will bless us. You will open the windows of heaven. Pour your blessing upon us. We will see blessings of health. We will see blessings of protection from every virus. We receive blessings of money, O oh God, according to your word. We thank you and we give you glory, honor, and adoration. In Jesus' name we have prayed and everybody shall say amen. Hallelujah. Okay. It's time to end the service in the next two minutes. We want to sing the last song, um, Smile, then we we end the tab. Now listen carefully. The home sales where our meetings are taking place right now. You give your offering over there too, okay, to the home sale leaders. And then the leader and the assistant, two people should sign as having seen the offering and then they would deliver it to the administration. Again, if you are in the home sales, all the offerings you have taken so far, take the offerings in the home sales. The leaders and assistants to endorse, write the amount, and then they endorse, and then they bring the amount to our church office. This is for only our church members who are meeting the home sales setting. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, I want us to pray. I'll pray for you. Now, let's pray for Ghana again. Ghana. Let's sing God bless our homeland, Ghana. Let's sing the song. And we, we keep coronavirus at bay. On Wednesday, the president has declared that we fast and pray. Everybody. Our president said on Wednesday we are all fasting. 
We are all, all fasting. Our president, our president. Oh, 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 wonderful. So, all our branches everywhere, please. On Wednesday, we are fasting for Ghana. So, let's pray a short prayer for Ghana. Um, for whatever be the case, those who have got it, God should heal them. Those who have got it, God should heal them. And it should be kept at bay. It should never affect many. God should cut the, cut the point where people can be infected. God can do it. Yeah, man, let's sing a song. God bless our homeland Ghana. Go. Go. God bless our homeland Ghana. Come on, sing out. And may our nation great and strong born to defend Christ, the name above every name, and the sound and mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord of lords and King of kings across all nations of the earth. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise that you are God above all gods. Today, we call Jesus, we call Jesus. We call Jesus against every power of darkness, demons unleashed into our world to kill, to devastate, to destroy. In the name of Jesus, we bind them, we cast them to the sea. In Jesus' precious name, you demon coronavirus, affecting people, killing people. We speak to you, Jesus' name. By the blood of the Lamb, we rebuke you. By the blood of the Lamb, we rebuke you. And we cast you out of this nation. May God visit this nation, deliver us, preserve every life, preserve every soul, preserve everybody in this nation. Let your peace abide. Let your peace abide. Let your peace abide. Every district, every home, every region, every place where our people live, Lord, let your peace abide. Preserve every life from this demonic infection. In the name of Jesus, the name above every name, we thank you and we bless you. May God keep you. May God strengthen you. May God preserve your life through thick and thin. May his presence abide by on you. May the cross of Jesus be inserted in your body. May the power of the cross preserve your life. May the blood be an ensign on your life. In Jesus' precious name, we give God praise. The grace of Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be this now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy are following us for the days of our lives, and we are dwelling in God's presence forevermore. Amen. Now, stay where you are and let's close with this beautiful song. Smile. Just listen to the song and smile. And then uh, we take it from there. And then we all disperse. So, two minutes, hang around, and let's throw this song. And then we all uh, back away. Wednesday, I'm coming your, your way live again. Wednesday at 7 p.m., you come, and then you just uh, go to our Facebook page again and log on. God bless you so much. Let's go. Let's smile.
Where is the love and the joy? Where is the love and the joy that you promised me? Tell me it's alright. See, I almost gave up. I almost gave up. But what power that I can't explain? Fell from heaven. Fell from heaven like a shower down. Everybody say, smile, even though it hurts you, I smile. Come on, smile, somebody. I know God is working, so I smile. Even though I'm in it for a even while. Even though I'm in it for a while. I smile. I smile. You smile, say, smile. Hey. It's so hard to look up when you've been down. Show sure hate to see you give up now. You look so much better when you smile, so smile. It's dark in my heart and it feels like a cold night Today's a new day, sick Today's a new day Woo! Tell me where are my blue sky? Where is the love and the joy? Where is the love and the joy that you promised me? Tell me it's alright I almost gave up I almost gave up But a power that I can't explain Fell from heaven Fell from heaven like a shower now God is working, so I smile. Oh, I'm in it for a while. I smile. I smile. You smile, say smile. It's so hard to look up when you've been down. Show me hate to see you give up now. You look so much better. You look so much better when you smile. Oh, here we go. Say smile for me. Come on, look at your neighbor and smile. Can you just smile? Yeah. Can you just smile? Come on. For me. Everybody say smile. Smile for me. Everybody smile. Can you just smile? Yeah. Now I want you to lift for up your hands me. away from side to side. Everybody say. Oh, oh, oh. You look so much better when you. Oh, oh, oh. You look so, so much, much better, better when you, when you oh, smile. Oh, oh. You look so much better when you oh oh oh. You look so much better when you oh oh. Everybody go. You look so much better when you oh oh oh. You look so much better when you oh oh oh. You look so much better when you oh oh oh. You look so much better when you smile. Keep smiling, everybody. Keep smiling. Amen.